Okay, so let's pivot. So Draymond Green called Nick out. I want to run the piece of video we have. We'll start with this. Mm-hmm. Let's roll the tape on Draymond Green, very popular podcast that happens to be on this network, the volume. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Nick Wright comes out and say, uh, Steph Curry's that's it. He'll never see the finals again. And Andrew Wiggins, three years, $95 million left on his deal. Why would they go do that worst trade and blah, blah, blah? I hope you're willing to stand on that word, brother. Stand on that. And tell us why you thought that. Tell us why you thought that. Tell us why this whole series you've been yapping and yapping and then all of a sudden you want to switch to the dubs. Tell us why. Because what's in question is your basketball knowledge. Okay, Nick, um, it, it is interesting because obviously I defend Draymond. I thought he was so good in the last couple of games of the series. He was so Draymond. He was such a catalyst. Um, I always argued that the great teams have always had players who know exactly what they are. Manu Ginobili came off the bench. He would have started for 27 teams. He knew exactly what he was. Um Pippen knew exactly what he was. So did Ron Harper. Harper averaged 20 a game for the Clippers when he came over. But that's not what they needed from him. The great teams have these players uh, that could score more, that could do more. Now, Draymond's not a a great scorer. But I've always felt he is the bouncer with the nightclub. And that he controls his emotions more than people think he does. And that his job is to be a more skilled Rodman. He's trying to be annoying. And I yeah, really think I think it really, really works because when he goes to more skilled players and disrupt them like he did with Jalen Brown, I thought it was in, in, incredibly important. So that's why I argue guys like Draymond historically have immense value. I, all that's true. So I want to – there's a lot of stuff here I want to yeah. address. I'm going to do it in reverse order. Everything you said is true. It is also true that through four finals games – he was having, arguably, the worst finals of any future Hall of Famer ever. The, his <laughs> finals is fine through four games. The first game was by basketball references game score metric, the worst playoff game of his life. His second game was, he. I thought he was actually kind of good. That was the game where he was totally unhinged insane in it. The third yeah. game was the worst game of his life by that same metric. His fourth game, he was so bad, his mother called him out on Twitter and his coach benched him. Game five, he was really good in the first half. In the second half, he had four fouls, fouled out, took zero shots. And then in game six, he was excellent. He was excellent. He was on both ends of the court. That's Draymond. That's a fair reading of Draymond Green's NBA Finals. Okay? That's the finals. Now we go... You know, we we open up the aperture, as my buddy Kevin Wilds would say. Draymond Green's one of the, it, he called himself the greatest defensive player ever. That's nonsense. Is he one of the three greatest defensive players of his era? Without a doubt. Is he a future Hall of Famer? Without a doubt. Is he, in my opinion, more important than Clay Thompson has been in this Warriors dynastic run? It is close. But yes, because I think you can find in this league a shooter more easily than you can find a guy who's going to do all the little shit Draymond does on offense. The offense has gone away this year, but he used to, I mean, he scored 32 in game yeah. seven of the finals. Dude had 32, 15, and nine in, or 10 and nine <laughs> in game seven of the finals that they lost to LeBron. He used to be able to score the basketball. Um, and his passing is great. And he's a good at times, great defender now. There was a three-year stretch where he was the most devastating defender in basketball. He won one defensive player of the year, finished second the two other years to Kawhi Leonard. I came on your show before I even had my own show and said Draymond was the best defender in basketball. So all that's true about his career, right? He is not the rebounder Rodman was, but he is a better offensive player than Rodman was. Modern Rodman is a great comp, right? Okay. Yeah. Now to what Draymond said about me. I, unlike, here's one of the reasons you and I get along, Colin, in addition to the many things we, you know, that we have in common, here is maybe one of the most important. 
we are two of the only members of the media that understand what's good for the goose and good for the gander. We make our living making bold proclamations, talking a little bit of shit, taking a little time at times pointed jabs and trying to trying to literally predict the future. You don't do the predict the future stuff as much as I do, but you do some of it. Everything about picking a game or a champion is predicting yeah. the future, which, by the way, not possible. You can have informed speculation. And you and I understand that occasionally we're going to have big swings and crush it over the fence. And occasionally, not only yeah. are we going to miss the ball, bat's going to fly out of our hand and hit the old lady in the front row, and people are going to bring that shit up for a couple years. And you got to take it. My Andrew Wiggins take that is gone international at this point. I was getting tweets in Hebrew. It was on it was on K-pop <laughs> TikTok. Okay. It has gone international for being a bad take. I was wrong. Draymond said, so this is my issue with what Draymond said. Draymond said, I hope you stand on it. I if I were to ask talk to Draymond, I would say, what do you mean by stand on it? Like, do you mean by admit I said it? Like not say that's a deep fake. Okay, I will stand on that. Are you saying, I hope you still believe that? Of course, I don't still believe that. I was wrong. Like Andrew Wiggins played better than I expected him to. I said they wouldn't ever make the finals. They just won the championship. So I can't stand on that part of the take. It lit what I said wouldn't happen did happen. Um, So I, I just missed on it. And that that happens. The only frustration I have is not directed at Draymond because Draymond is new media. And by the way, Draymond, I'm not sure where they teach new media classes, but if you're going to be in new media, you should probably get some of the stuff right. Like when you say, (laughs) oh, and now you want to switch your pick to the Warriors. No, my friend, it was actually worse than that. I picked the Warriors. Then I switched my pick to Boston. So I was wrong, but you were wrong in your new media about what I was wrong about. Okay, but here is what is frustrating to me. My colleagues, not like Wilds and Brew, but like general colleagues, sports media, who have shared that two and a half year old Andrew Wiggins clip. When you know how I know that's an old clip? Because I don't have hair and I'm in the studio. It's been two and a half fucking years since I've been in the studio <laughs> and, I, and since I had a shaved head. So it's an old clip. Um, but folks pretending that. What I said there wasn't mostly consensus opinion really yeah. irks me. Andrew yeah. Wiggins was considered a huge miss and the worst contract in sports. Now, the Warriors, to their credit, saw something I didn't. And that's why Bob Myers makes the big bucks. But the idea that I was the only person criticizing the Andrew Wiggins trade is so ahistorical, but... I said this on TV today, and I'll say it again. I hope everyone has their old TikToks ready to send this to me in 2025. I saw the odds, championship odds for your beloved Warriors. They're the favorites to repeat. Man, get out of here. They are not winning the title next year. The And by the way, everyone should send, everyone associated with the Warriors should send uh, edible arrangements and bouquets to Chris Middleton, thanking him for being hurt because if he doesn't get hurt, the bucks kick the shit out of everybody. Nobody was beating Milwaukee. Giannis, everyone. I love people like, Oh, Mil- Boston gave Giannis trouble. They did. He averaged 35 and 15. I don't think they give him that much trouble. Um, so what, well, there's my rant. There's my answer to Draymond. Well, and by it, the way, can you, since you're his boss, can you tell him I would like to come on the Draymond green show? And I will, I will stand on it. Tell him that I will come on the show. We can share some Lobos tequila. We're both clutch clients. We Mav, Mav can be the moderator. We have a lot of things in common. Uh, You know, uh, he's got a chirpy mother. I've got a chirpy wife. We've got some things that we can (laughs) see eye to eye on and we can discuss whatever he wants. He's actually, I will. He's actually, uh, he, he has a, a, He's very coachable. People wouldn't, um, you wouldn't suspect that being a rich, you know, hundred million net worth star. 
He's as coachable as any athlete I've ever had. He's constantly saying, don't, don't tell me how good I am. What do I got to get better at? Which is such a redeemable quality for Well, then you should anybody. tell him to take that invisible backpack off when he's taking three-pointers. <laughs> That's what you should tell him. Be like, hey, Draymond, that, that little that little white rock you have on your back when you're shooting threes, you pretend <laughs> it's not there. 